What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, the real question of tonight was night two just as good as night one or better? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think it was, man. I do not think it was. I think night one held it down, but night two was in, was as enjoy it, it was enjoyable. But in my opinion, I think night one they they knocked it out the park, and night two was it was I, I guess you could say ex expectations weren't met for certain matches. I'm gonna get into those particular matches, but they it was still enjoyable. I still had a good time, and overall WrestleMania as a whole, WrestleMania 38 was pretty solid this year. I'm gonna be honest with you, I think I like WrestleMania 38 better than last year's WrestleMania. This was this was really, really good and really enjoyable as a whole. Um, but we're gonna get all into that, man. I got plenty to talk about. Appreciate all the love and support, man. Let's get right into my thoughts and opinions of WrestleMania 38 Night 2. So they started off the show with Triple H coming down to the ring. Got a great standing ovation. It was fantastic to see Triple H out there one more time. And he pretty much, he, he hung up his boots, man. He placed his boots in the center of the ring and called it a day, man. And it was, it was, it was great to see. You know, he can't, he's officially retired, and it was just a beautiful moment, man. And I'm pretty sure I could see him being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame next year. Uh, Triple H has provided us with some classic matches at WrestleMania, so it only made sense for him to start off the show and just pretty much put symbolize that he's done. He's done it all. He put his boots in the center of the ring, and he's out of there, man. So that was a good way to start off the show. And then we got into the Raw Tag Team Championships between RK Bro, the Street Profits, and Alpha Academy. This was a pretty good showing. I'm not going to lie to you. They started off hot, and I was really looking forward to how the rest of the night was playing. They started off fantastic. This match was enjoyable. I was not expecting RK Bro to retain, but they did. I must say, the... The, oh man, that I, I want to say, uh, what's his name? Matt Riddle. He hit a very impressive. I, I think it was like a RKO off the top, top uh, turnbuckle to um, Montez Ford. I could be m mistaken, but he had a nice showing as well. Him and Randy, they just had a nice showing. And of course, uh, Chad Gable uh, coming off the top rope or whatnot, right into an RKO uh, at the finish of the match. They had a good show, and everyone was able to show the strengths of their team. Can we just say, Montez Ford is ridiculous. His hops, his athleticism is fantastic, man. And I was really thinking the Street Profits were going to come with the win here, but they didn't. But either way, this was a great way to start off the show. And um, at the end, Street Profits were going to do a toast with RK, bro. They had a nice little showing. And then... <laughs> They even started looking at uh, Gable Stevenson in the crowd or whatnot. They introduced him last night, but he was front row. They uh, wanted to get Gable Stevenson uh, in the mix or whatnot because, you know, at WWE is trying to, you know, groom him for the uh, potentially maybe the main roster most likely. I don't know if he'll go to NXT and then get to the main roster, but that's, that's their prospect. They want Gable Stevenson on the show. He, he's like, I guess you could say the modern day Kurt Angle for WWE, someone that's legitimately a legitimate wrestler, uh, a former uh, um, Olympic champion. Like they, they're really going with that route of believability, and I'm interested to see what they do with him. But he got into the ring, and then uh, Chad Gable can uh, kind of interrupted the segment, and then we we had a nice little interaction with them too because they can actually go, and I'm, I'm looking forward to them potentially at some point in the future having a match they can actually wrestle so this should be interesting i think he hit him with an overhead suplex i could be wrong he launched them though like it was nothing and uh they toasted up the ramp uh out um the street profits and rk bro with uh gable stevenson so that was a pretty cool moment great way to start off the show for sure <laughs> bobby lashley and omos this was okay it was not bad uh i, I want to make this uh, I want to kind of put this out there. This night was full of booking-wise. I think WWE made some 
they were spot on them with the booking wise booking of the matches like who they were gonna have win but the execution wasn't there that's that's i'm a that's how i sum up tonight but overall this match was uh i didn't expect it to be no technical prowess like technical masterpiece because I, I feel like omos he's just he's just the great collie he's just the black version of the great colleague. That's just really what he is. He doesn't have too much movement. Don't have really too much moves. It's just his size and his stature is his offense, pretty much. Uh, Bobby Lashley had a great showing, uh, especially selling for Omos. I want to say there was a spot where Bobby Lashley like got slung, like he got thrown over. Like it was in one one of the ring corners, he got thrown. But as he got thrown onto the turnbuckles, his head hit the ring post itself it looked kind of brutal but ultimately he ended up getting the win and he beat omos and it was it was incredible bro like i was not expecting that and bobby lashley got the win as a face and we will see what they do with bobby lashley i'm not sure where they take omos i don't think people really as interested in him like he's cool as just this tall imposing person but I don't know if people really like just care too much. He's giving me great Kali vibes and hopefully they're able to do something with him. Get him in such a better feud potentially. Who knows? But people were it, like they didn't really care so much. It was more so this was Bobby Lashley moment. And I, I, I'm okay with the decision here. So Bobby Lashley gets the win. It was an okay match. Wasn't nothing that I would go back to watch anytime soon. But it was serviceable. Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. Anything goes. This literally, I, I can't really grade this as a match. This was just, just to have fun. It's one of those type of segments. It was just a fun WrestleMania segment. Was there some cringe there? Yeah, but this was, it's, it's jackass. That's literally what it was. It was jackass on WrestleMania. They were having uh, the little mouse trap tables, the huge giant mouse trap. We men out there body slamming Sami Zayn was definitely a highlight enjoyed that um also the the big hand the big hand slapping uh Sami Zayn out of nowhere I thought that was um that was definitely uh definitely pretty cool well just like it just it was funny like you could tell the crowd was having a good time we were having a good time watching it on stream if you guys saw us on uh live streaming uh today thank you to everyone that showed up on the inner clutch page it was fantastic and we were just having fun with this match this match was just supposed to be dumb fun and not to be taken seriously so i enjoyed this for what it was i definitely did enjoy this kind of just lightens up the mood and everybody's having a good time um and johnny knoxville gets the win uh of course with the help of the jackass crew it was cool enjoyable it, you can't add nothing more than just fun silliness you know what i'm saying so now we got the women's tag team championship carmella uh and queen zelina versus sasha banks and naomi versus Liv and um and uh rhea ripley and natalia and Shayna baszler and i am be honest with you this match was it was okay it was it wasn't it wasn't anything that I, i'll be like oh you, you definitely gotta watch i think the women performed well at least this weekend in my opinion becky and sasha they were the best women's match all weekend. Becky and, uh, no, uh, Becky and uh, Bianca Belair. Best women's match all weekend. This was okay. It had some some cool little cool little spots, cool little moments. But outside of that, um, it, 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 it was serviceable. But what made this work, in my opinion, is one, the chat on uh, you guys were you guys are some horn dogs in the chat you guys were going crazy with the the lesson over all these women that's what made it funny and the fact that um they gave the win to me to the right team in naomi and sasha banks uh we'll see what they do with the the tag the women's tag team championships uh i do see sasha turning on naomi at some point but the right team won like I said, it wasn't bad. It had some enjoyable moments, um, but it's not something that I would go back to watch. But the right team won, so I'm okay with that. So this was pretty pretty solid, solid, not bad. AJ Styles versus Edge. I'm not going to lie to you. This match, to me, should have been a lot better. Uh, was, it, was it bad by any means? No. 
And I think what kind of messed up our viewing experience is around this time on the live stream, we were experiencing some like network issues. So our live, like our stream kept disconnecting. Like it kept lagging to the point where people couldn't even watch it. So we were trying to fix that while this match was happening. So it kind of messed up our experience. I may have to go back and just actually watch it from start to finish so I can really get into it. Because that entire time we were trying to fix it up. But there were some good things about this match that I did enjoy. I will say I enjoyed Edge's entrance. It was so fantastic. Love Edge's entrance. Thought it was great. Thought it was fantastic. They killed it this year. Um, They had a good showing. It seemed like they... They really worked well in the ring. It's just, you know, I don't know if the crowd was kind of dead um, through. I think it was a little bit too slow, a little bit too methodical. But at the same time, it wasn't bad by any means. But I, I think a lot of people were expecting it to be even better. I think a lot of people were more focused on that match. Uh, I guess the hype behind it, because everyone assumed this was going to be the match that stole night two for sure if not the all of wrestlemania 38 this year and i don't think it did it did not steal the show but it was good it was enjoyable and once again i gotta watch it again in its entirety uh without any distractions because like i said we were trying to fix the connection issue so we didn't really get a chance to really get into it but towards the end it definitely picked up and the reports were right some of you guys were hitting me up on instagram and twitter saying that edge is supposed to be having some type of faction creating a faction and you see damian priest out there and you're trying to figure out why the hell is damian priest out there and i, I want to say um aj styles was going for the phenomenal forum so he got distracted damian priest is just sitting there he looks at him like what you doing out here so he goes for the phenomenal forearm and then he gets hit midair with a spear one two three and at the end of the match Damon Priest hops in the ring and pretty much bowed down to Edge. And now he's a part of his factions. I don't, I'm don't. i interested to see what they do with this. I was not expecting this, but this is cool. I like the ending and it, I like what, what it's setting up. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what happens on Monday Night Raw. So like that was, that was, I like that. That aspect of what they're doing with Edge. I definitely do enjoy that. I wish AJ Styles could have got the win there, but I think they're trying to b tell a bigger story with what they're trying to do with Edge here. So it was a match I think we all wanted to steal the show, but it didn't live up to the hype. But still, it was enjoyable for the most part, part in my opinion. Then the New Day versus Sheamus. Uh, the New Day, yeah. The New Day versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland. This was easily the worst match of the night. Um... You can, uh, this match was supposed to originally happen in night one, and then in night two, they literally only gave them five minutes, and they they didn't have enough time. You can tell they didn't even have enough time for this match. They gave them five minutes, and that was it, and uh, Sheamus and Ridge Holland uh, end up defeating New Day. I thought they were going to give the win to New Day since Kofi, uh, Big E did get injured. Uh, I do like the fact that uh kofi and xavier came out in like Big E attire in the singlets i thought that was pretty cool to show him love but i was thinking they were gonna win it but they didn't they didn't win it at all um and ultimately it went to sheamus sheamus and ridge holland this match was as soon as it started it was over i, I didn't really even get a chance to get invested into it uh yeah easily worst match of the night it was just like all right y'all shouldn't have even had this match honestly if y'all didn't have enough time, y'all shouldn't have even uh, put this match on the card, in my opinion. I think they should have just probably kept this off or maybe did a pre-show of some sort, but they should not have put this on the main card because it was really kind of a waste of everybody's time, in my opinion. So, worst match of the night. Pat McAfee, Austin Theory, very entertaining. I called it Pat McAfee. He is pretty good in the goddamn ring. It, I saw it with Adam Cole, and I've seen it here at WrestleMania. The crowd was old. They love Pat McAfee. He came out there having a great time. The crowd is singing his entrance theme song. He, Bro, he had it. He had the crowd in the palm of his hand. Crowd went crazy. Vince McMahon was sitting at ringside for Austin Theory. It was fantastic. I love this entire segment. This was fun. It brought the energy back up from the previous match. This was great. This was great. This, honestly, 
honestly, it may be up there as one of the better matches of tonight. I'm be honest with you. Because the crowd energy for this match was probably the loudest we had seen and heard since the opening match with the Raw Tag Team Championship match. The energy from this match alone was fantastic. And what led into after this match, after Pat McAfee got the win, doing amazing things, dude is fantastic, very athletic. After he got the win, then he starts talking trash to Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon takes off his shirt. Vince, at the age he is, still looking good. He was ready to get in the ring, got in the ring. Of course, Austin Theory hit him from behind. They they had a match. Vince McMahon <laughs> in 2022 had a match with Pat McAfee. Of course, the help of Austin Theory. And ultimately, he pretty much ended up, Vince McMahon ends up getting a win over Pat McAfee. I'm like, all right. It was, but it was a cool little moment to see. But in my back, the, the back of my mind, I'm like, they're doing this for a reason. Because we only have one more match. This is not it. He, Stone Cold is probably going to come out. You, It only makes sense for Stone Cold to come out. And if you've seen our live stream, when you heard, when we heard that glass break, we lost our shit. We marked out. Stone Cold came out there. And it was great. It, it brought me back to the Attitude Era, the Vince and Stone Cold feud. Oh, man. It was so good to see them in the ring together. And it was funny. They got Stone Cold. First and foremost, shot. can somebody send me on Instagram or Twitter? Somebody please send me the, the clip of Austin Theory getting stunned. And he sold that shit like... A million bucks. One of the best selling of the stunners I have seen of all time. It remind me of when Scott Hall, rest in peace. God, rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace your soul, man. Miss you. It, re it reminds me of when Scott Hall sold the stunner from Stone Cold. How he hopped up. Austin Theory literally elevated himself. That was so fucking funny. Then they, uh, Vince and, um, and Stone Cold do a little beer toast. Vince is sipping on it and he finally drinks it. And then he goes for the stunner on Vince. But Vince, Vince has never really been good at selling the stunner. So he kind of fell back. He's slipping and falling and after he uh, get kicked in the gut. But then uh, Stone Cold is able to grab a hold of him and finally hit him with it. It, it was great. It was great. I enjoyed that so much, man. It, it, uh, that was that whole little segment, that whole little moment, just brought me back uh, to a, to to my to my childhood, man. And it just if this honestly, this whole segment, Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory, then Pat McAfee versus Vince, and then Vince getting stunned by Stone Cold Steve Austin, best segment of the night. There's no doubt in it. This segment, once again. Involving Stone Cold Steve Austin, best segment of the night. This whole situation, best segment of the night. Definitely brought the crowd alive. Bre definitely brought some life to this, uh, to WrestleMania for sure. Um, and then of course, Pat McAfee gets stunned for his trouble. I thought it was entertaining, and it was great to see <laughs> Pat McAfee after being stunned. He's on the ground still drinking beer. This all this whole segment was great. Loved it, loved it, loved it. This was this was fun. This is what WrestleMania is all about. Like, legitimately, this is what WrestleMania is all about. So, I I, I definitely I definitely enjoyed that. Uh, once again, granted, Vince couldn't really do much like he used to back when he would get in the ring sometimes. But it was enjoyable just to see it. It was cool and it was a great setup for 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 what we got in Stone Cold coming back and stunning everybody one more time at wrestlemania and of course right here the main event winner take all championship unification match roman reigns versus brock lesnar this probably for me is actually the most disappointing of the matches probably in my opinion i think it, it was it was the most disappointing in the sense of not the outcome the outcome was correct i'm glad they went with the outcome but it was most disappointing because the feud, the buildup itself for this match was actually quite entertaining. I love the buildup for this match. This match was, the buildup was better than the actual match itself. It was. I think people were expecting, like, 
total chaos. The way they've been building it up, the fact that Brock has been trying to kill Roman for the past few weeks, the fact that Roman bloodied up Brock Lesnar at Madison Square Garden, you would think this is about to be total carnage. And it was kind of tame. Hell, their previous WrestleMania matches had blood. This one had not an ounce of blood, no color. I'm thinking this got to have color. I'm thinking Brock, when he's taking off the gloves at the beginning of the match, oh, oh, it's about to go down. And it's pretty much a Brock and Roman Reigns match that we have seen plenty of times over. There wasn't new, there wasn't anything new they added to this match. It, it was, it was actually, it was okay. I enjoyed it watching it with my homies on stream and because Dub, you know Dub is not a big fan of Brock Lesnar, the character, not the person himself. But he did not care for Brock, so he was just happy by any means of Roman winning. I was kind of disappointed once they went with the traditional referee spot. I was kind of disappointed that Roman cheated. I get it. He's a heel. But this is a momentous a moment for Roman only because Roman has never beaten Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And now Roman can't beat Brock clean. I remember a time when Roman was at the beginning of his heel turn. Uh, uh, last year, he was beating a lot of these opponents clean. Was he cheating in some of them? Yes. But he could get the job done clean, and I respected that. I like that when a heel can win without cheating. I love that. I also like it when a heel does have to cheat. It makes sense. But in this sense, I think he, uh, I would have preferred him to win clean, but I guess I get it. He's a heel, so I understand. But it, it comes off as, well, Brock, well, Roman can't get the job done, no matter what it is. He he can't, Roman can't beat him clean. He can't do it. He has to cheat, and it, it kind of sucks. That's that's my only disappointment, but once again, I'm going to keep saying this. I understand he's a heel. You're not supposed to, he's supposed to cheat. He's supposed to do heel-like things, so I get it. Cool. What else? Now, towards the end of the match, Brock Lesnar has Roman in the Kimura. And it looks like he's putting a lot, he's putting a lot of torque on it. Like he's not bullshitting him with the submission. He's putting it in or whatnot. Roman's trying to edge towards the ropes. And you can see Paul Heyman at the corner push the ropes just a little bit so Roman can get it, get it. And he grabs it. But after he, he releases the hold, you can hear Roman visibly say, it's out, it's out, it's out. He was talking about his shoulder. I thought it was like a kayfabe injury, but no, I believe his shoulder was legitimately knocked out of socket. Like, I believe his shoulder was knocked out of place or whatnot. So he's saying that over and over and over in the match. So, of course, I'm, I'm not sure, but it seemed, I don't know if y'all didn't feel that way, but it seemed like this match ended way too quick. Like, I feel like they had to call an audible. So, after that, all he does, he gets back up and he hits the spear. On Brock Lesnar, one, two, three. The match is done. And he becomes the unified champion. Um, but it was just one of those things. Because you can see his his arm, like his shoulder was kind of like it was bruised up or whatnot. So I don't know uh, if that was the case. Um, I saw one of you guys comment uh, on the live stream that uh, his shoulder was, was, uh, was dislocated. And then he popped it back in place after the match. Or whatnot. So I'm not sure if that's what it was, and they had to call the audible. Because to me, the way the match ended so abruptly, it seemed like they had to call an audible. Because he's yelling out, "It's out! It's out! It's out!" His shoulders out of its socket. So it's like I'm sure they probably had to call an audible to end the match quicker than they originally planned on. Because I just felt like the match just ended a little bit quicker, in my opinion. But kudos to Roman to still continuing the match, still hitting the spear with his shoulder out of out of socket. That's a testament to how tough he is. So I kudos to that, man. That that was pretty cool. But ultimately, that that ma this match was pretty disappointing. Uh, for this to be the biggest match of WrestleMania history, as they've been coining it, this was disappointing. And I do not, I'm stand by this. I don't want to see this no more. I'm done. All right, Roman got the win. What? He didn't get it clean. He finally beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. 
I do not want to see this. No more. No more. I don't want to see this match no more. That's it. No more. Mm -mm. Don't want to see it. This was their last opportunity to really give us probably one of their better matches. And I'm going to be honest with you, was it better than their Pat? Their, uh, I want to say the last match they had at WrestleMania. I forgot which WrestleMania it was. Was it 34? When they were in New Orleans, I think. Uh, yes, it was better than that match for sure. But this match right here, um, the buildup was better than the match itself. Was it okay? Yeah, it was okay. Did the right person win? Yes, the right person did win. Did we see a lot of the things that we've seen in all their matches pretty much? Yes, we have. Um, but honestly, it was hard for them to follow the segment of Stone Cold. That Stone Cold segment, I, that was a tough position for them. But if there was any match that could have followed that with the how hyped the crowd was, it should have been this one. And they didn't really deliver they didn't. It was it was pretty much what we've all seen. Even to the barricade spot. How many times have we seen that with these two guys alone? It was just kind of like we've been here, done this. You know what I'm saying? The only difference is Roman Reigns' shoulder got knocked out of socket. That, that was the only difference maker here. But outside of that, the right person won. And it'll be interesting to see what happens, what is said on Monday Night Raw. Uh, so, best believe. I will be streaming Monday Night Raw tomorrow, so be on the lookout. I'm filming this um, the night of WrestleMania Night 2, um, so I will be dropping, I will be doing uh, um, the live streaming reaction for Monday Night Raw, the, the Raw after Mania, see how that goes, hopefully it's a good show, and it should be, it should be pretty interesting, but overall for me, if I had to give a number score for WrestleMania Night 2, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a solid seven. This is a solid seven. It's not. I gave yes uh night one an eight. I'm gonna give this one a seven. That Stone Cold segment was pretty fantastic. Pat McAfee had a great showing as well. Um, the tag Raw Tag Team Championship match was a good opener. Um, I really was wishing the Edge and uh, AJ Styles match could have been a little bit better. Granted, once again, I was kind of busy trying to fix the stream, so I wasn't able to pay attention. But uh, that's something I, I still want to go back and really just focus in on. But it was still still a solid match. Still, you know, in my opinion, worthy enough to at least be on WrestleMania alone. And then New Day and uh, versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland. That was that was a waste of everybody's time, in my opinion. And the women's uh ch tag team uh, championship match was okay it was serviceable nothing to really just go back and watch but the right team won so oh and we can't forget johnny knoxville versus Sami Zayn. It was just whole bunch whole bunch of fun bobby lashley omos it was it was enjoyable for what it was it, you know it was it was cool and not too bad overall seven out of ten for night two still think night one they knocked it out the park night two uh a slight it was slight bump in the road few parts um it's just i think the main event if the main event was better i probably would give it an eight out of ten but since the main event did not live up to the hype of the build i gotta give it a seven out of ten but comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy night two did you guys uh enjoy the main event what did you think of brock versus Roman uh Roman Reigns did you guys enjoy the main event did you guys feel like it was kind of lackluster also let me know which night did you like per, uh more did you like night one over night two man let me know all of these things and are you guys excited to see what's gonna happen on Monday Night Raw but I appreciate all the love and support road to 80k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace